Hello and welcome to Quick Charge. I'm Steven and today is Thursday, May 2nd. Tesla's next-gen Dojo AI training tile is in production according to supplier TSMC. Tesla has been heavily investing in AI training compute power both through buying NVIDIA hardware and building its own under its Dojo. The first generation of its Dojo supercomputing platform went into operation last summer. Shortly after, Tesla has expanded its partnership with TSMC, the large semiconductor company that manufactures the Dojo chip for the automaker. Now, TSMC has confirmed that Tesla's next generation Dojo chip has entered production and they are working on tech that could deliver much greater power to Dojo in 2027. This new tile is likely going to be used for Tesla's new planned $500 million Dojo cluster in New York. Separately, Tesla is building a new 100 megawatt data center to train its self-driving AI at Gigafactory Texas, but this system is going to use NVIDIA hardware. The coming summer heat is set to once again break the prior year's record-breaking temperature. For gas motorcycle riders, an internal combustion engine becomes scorching hot in the summer. Air-cooled engines rely on wind flow from riding to manage operating temperatures. However, even with liquid-cooled engines, there's just no fighting the heat from internal combustion engine that you sit on. Electric engines are inherently more energy efficient than internal combustion engines. Fewer moving parts and no regular oil changes means less time and money on maintenance. Electric motorbikes look cool and run cool, but still have a long way to go. Right now, electric motorcycles are ready for commuters. That 100 plus mile ranges and slow charging speeds aren't deal breakers if your commute isn't that long and you can charge overnight. However, motorcycle commuting is pretty rare in the US and electric bikes aren't good at the things that most motorcyclists do. They won't do well on track day as performance does not match sport bikes yet. The range is not enough for group rides and road trips and there isn't a robust charging infrastructure yet. For now, electric motorcycle technology has plenty of room for improvement in the years to come. Many riders will be sticking with their gas bikes until electric motorcycles greatly surpass what they already have. Toyota today announced that it's turning its R&D office in Los Angeles into its new North America hydrogen headquarters. Toyota says its H2HQ will drive its North American-led hydrogen initiatives and help localize global hydrogen-related technologies and products. That will include both light-duty and heavy-duty fuel cell applications, stationary fuel cell power generation, and port vehicle applications. The LA R&D center hosts Toyota's largest dynameter, has a scalable test bench for stationary applications, and a hydrogen fueling station for light and heavy heavy-duty vehicles. Toyota is building a microgrid at H2HQ that will allow it to operate off-grid. The microgrid includes 230 kilowatts of solar, a 1 megawatt stationary proton exchange membrane fuel cell generator, 325 kilowatt solid oxide fuel cell, and a 500 kilowatt hour battery storage system. Toyota wanting to do R&D on heavy-duty fuel cell applications, stationary fuel cell power generation, port vehicle applications and microgrid R&D is intriguing. But hydrogen light duty vehicles just don't seem like a good use of their time, money, and resources. To fill up a hydrogen light duty car, you go to a hydrogen station which gets 95% of their hydrogen from methane. Plus, hydrogen stations are rare. California is the only US state with a network of retail hydrogen stations. The U.S. announced two proposals for offshore wind sails that could generate more than 18 gigawatts of clean energy, enough to power more than 6 million homes. The offshore wind auction areas announced are off the Oregon coast and in the Gulf of Maine. The first ever offshore wind energy auction in the Gulf of Maine would include nearly 1 million acres that have the potential to generate approximately 15 gigawatts of renewable energy and power more than 5 million homes. The proposed lease sale in Oregon includes just under 200,000 acres which have the potential to power more than 1 million homes with renewable energy. The state of Oregon has a set goal of achieving 3 gigawatts of offshore wind by 2030. Due to deep waters, any offshore wind farms in the Gulf of Maine and offshore Oregon will consist of floating wind turbines. A new type of electric bicycle battery is gaining traction in the industry, potentially ushering in unprecedented levels of safety and security for riders. We're quickly approaching the age of the potted e-bike battery. There's no doubt that safety is an important subject when it comes to e-bike batteries. Now, a new type of manufacturing process is growing in popularity, claiming to significantly increase the safety of e-bike batteries by reducing the risk of fires, even when the battery is abused or damaged. Potting, which uses a hardening resin poured between cells to isolate them from each other and the environment, can mitigate between the biggest factors resulting in fires, corrosion, and physical damage. Saltwater spray and vapor penetrating the seals in an e-bike battery case can slowly corrode battery cells, eventually leading to a short circuit. 
Potted batteries can significantly extend the lifespan of e-bike batteries by reducing the wear and tear associated with vibration and repeated impact. The solidified potting material stabilizes the battery cells, minimizes movement within the casing, and offers a buffer against the jolts and bumps of everyday riding. Recently, major national bike brands have announced bikes with potted batteries, which shows a big shift in the industry. In today's community comment found on YouTube, Nick mentioned that Tesla cutting superchargers may have been a smart idea. With the EV sales slowing down and NAC's adoption already underway, it may not make sense to build out as many stations as previously thought. Musk kept mentioning a reorganization for the next phase of growth. It may be that supercharger doesn't play a role in this, and the reshuffling may serve to get everyone behind self-driving. Thank you for watching Quick Charge by Electric. I'm Steven, and have a great day.